Good morning, everyone. Welcome. So we're excited to hear about the riff today. We have a lot of great news to share with you. So thanks for coming out. So three years ago, this August, we started a Kickstarter with a bold mission. We wanted to revolutionize gaming and transform the way we experienced entertainment. We set out to finally deliver on the dream of virtual reality with the Oculus Rift, an incredible community of gamers, developers, and enthusiasts came together to support that Kickstarter. It was nothing short of absolute incredibleness. It was awesome. It blew our minds. So why virtual reality? Let's take a look back. Where has this all started? Since the inception of Atari and Apple some 40 years ago, we've been on this journey of incredible breakthroughs, incredible innovation and progress in gaming and personal computing. We've seen pixels light up, moving sprites across the screen, and finally rich, beautiful 3D worlds. Worlds that we all fell in love with, characters and stories that we fell in love with. My childhood is just littered with these memories, as I'm sure many of you are. We grew up playing these games. We love these games, we love these characters. We've been immersed in this world of gaming. But there's been something missing. There's been something kind of holding it all back. It's always been trapped behind a 2D display. As hard as you try to imagine actually being there, being inside of the game, you're simply not. Your brain knows it. Your brain knows you're sitting in that living room. You're playing the game on a TV. No matter what happens, no matter if that T-Rex comes down at you in the, in the screen, it growls at you, it's still just trapped into a screen. So let's take a look. We have the T-Rex. We make him huge. How do you feel? It's a screen. You don't feel scared. No big deal. Even if that was animating, even if that was moving, and we had thunderous audio in this theater, you still wouldn't feel much different. Your subconscious would say, don't worry. It's just an image on a screen. It's a video game on a screen. Now imagine that T-Rex came crashing through this theater, hovering over you 20, 30 feet tall, roaring, swooping down and making eye contact with you. I bet you'd feel a lot different. I bet most of us would get up and run out of here as fast as we could. That's the magic of virtual reality. Delivering that incredible, deep, and visceral feeling that you only get in real life, but now in the virtual world, in virtual reality. And with the Oculus Rift, we're able to cross that threshold. We're able to finally deliver on the dream of virtual reality. VR enables us to experience anything, anywhere. It is that powerful. You'll be able to slip on a pair of Oculus goggles, and you'll be able to teleport to different worlds. For the first time, we will finally be inside of the game. This is going to change everything. Gamers have been dreaming of this. We've all been dreaming about this for decades, and it is finally here. This is the beginning of VR gaming. Today, I'm excited to show you the Oculus Rift. So here it is. This is it. This is the Oculus Rift. It's light. You can hold it with one hand. 
With this device, you're going to finally be able to teleport to new worlds. You're going to be immersed in games. You're going to experience games as you've always dreamed of experiencing them. This Oculus Rift is going to deliver the magic of presence, the feeling of actually being there, really truly believing that you're there. Your brain flips this switch. So again, the last 40 years, we've been experiencing incredible games on 2D surfaces, and we've been trying to trick our brain. Take that leap. And now, in virtual reality, in the Oculus Rift, you're going to find yourself reminding your brain that this is not real. You're going to be doing the opposite. You're going to try to convince yourself, don't worry, that dinosaur hovering over me, it's not actually real. It is a fundamental shift. It's a paradigm change, and it all begins now. So to pull this off, we had to have a really tight integration of hardware and software. It took years of development to get this right. It took an amazing team, one of the best teams ever assembled. Let's take a closer look at the Rift headset. We've designed comfortable presence. It features two OLED screens that deliver low persistence. So as you look around, there's no motion blur, there's no judder, there's no pixels. You're really there. You can focus on virtual objects. It feels like you just put on a pair of glasses. Maybe not quite as high resolution as you one day want, but this is the beginning, and it really delivers that magic of presence. That visual clarity is incredibly important, and the Rift delivers it. It also features a wide field of view so that you really feel immersed, and a new constellation tracking system. With this tracking system, you have very precise low latency movement. We've refined this over years. It's amazing. You put it on, and you feel like you're there. You're instantly teleported. Now, this same tracking system can actually be used for other real-world objects. We'll get to that in a little bit later. So back to the sensor. There's an external sensor that you put on your desk. It's simple and reserved. It's invisible once you put it down on your desk. You plug it into the back of your computer, and you're all set. That's it. It just disappears. We wanted it to be incredibly simple and easy to use. Developers are going to be able to create all kinds of revolutionary experiences, some seated, some standing. You'll be able to move around a little bit. This enables the future of virtual reality. The Rift's tracking system is precise, low latency, and you got that head movement, so you really feel like you're there. But the Rift doesn't just trick your eyes. It also tricks your ears. This was a really important part to achieving that level of presence, to believing you're there. It couldn't just be visual. It also had to be audio. You had to hear the sound effect happening right where you thought you saw it, and you can turn and look. You had to get that audio cue. Getting audio right is a critical component to achieving presence. And the Rift features an integrated audio system that we've, again, refined. We're incredibly proud of this. So let's take a look at T-Rex again. Imagine he's coming down this hallway. You hear him off into the distance. It needs to sound like he's off in the distance. As you turn and look and you feel the rumbling of him coming down the hallway, all that audio must be spatialized. It must be 360. It must match the visual cues. And that's what the VR audio system is all about. And the Oculus Rift delivers it. Now, as proud as we are about these integrated headphones, and we think you're all going to want to use them, we know that some people want to bring their own headphones. So we've made them really easy to take right off. They're removable. Something else you'll notice right away, right when you get that Rift, right in your hand. It's really lightweight. It's comfortable. You can slip it right on. We've been refining these ergonomics for years. The comfort of having this device on your head is very, very important. You don't want it pulling against your face. So we've spent a lot of time on the strap architecture. We've made it so that it 
as tight as it is so that it doesn't move around, it's not actually pulling against your face. So you can really be in there for a while enjoying the experience. Again, the goal is you put it on and it goes away, it disappears. We've dramatically improved the balance as well so that it feels very lightweight. When you put it on and you look around, you don't have this kind of device hanging out over your head. It just disappears and rests comfortably right on your brow. You're going to put it on like a baseball cap. You're going to toss it right on. It's going to be simple and easy. Now, one thing we noticed along the way is that everybody has a different distance between their eyes, just a little difference. So we've added a nice, convenient dial that allows you to adjust the lens distance. So you can get those lenses right in the center of your eye. It's, it's incredibly important. This allows you to achieve, again, that extra level of comfort and presence. For instance, my distance is actually 64 millimeters. Palmer, on the other hand, is 72. He's got to adjust it. Everybody's a little different. You'll put it on, you'll move the dial, and you'll be right there. You'll be in. So we've created the facial interface so that it's removable, so that it's really easy to replace. That was also something that we learned over the years. And we've evolved the form factor to better accommodate glasses, something many of us have, including myself. Finally, the headset is all wrapped in fabric. It feels incredible to hold and to wear. We really wanted to make this a beautiful product. I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it. So that's a brief overview of the Rift, the headset. We talked about the custom display and optics to achieve presence, the wide field of view, the constellation tracking system for precise, low latency head movement, as well as the 360 spatialized audio, the integrated headphones, and the advanced refined ergonomics so that it feels really comfortable, really lightweight, right on your head. So that's the headset. Now what about VR input? We wanted a device that developers and gamers understood, one that they've, they're familiar with, that they can get right, you know, get right into, one that developers can use to build a huge number of different experiences, cover all different kinds of genres, one that's really robust, well made. We tested all of them out there. We built our own prototypes. We've been working on this a long time. And one of the things that we determined along the way is that including a gamepad in this generation of the Rift is really important. That that was the right move for game developers and gamers around the world. For many of us, a gamepad is an extension of who we are. It's something we've used for years, since we were kids. I mean, these have decades of refinement in them. So today, I'm incredibly excited to announce that we're going to include a wireless Xbox One controller and adapter in the Oculus Rift. The Xbox One controller is designed by one of the top teams in gaming. To tell you more, I'd like to welcome Phil Spencer, head of Xbox. Hello, everyone. I'm Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, and I'm excited to be here to announce a partnership between Microsoft and a leader in virtual reality, Oculus. The opportunity for us to bring our wireless controller the one that we've spent so many years refining to every Oculus user at launch is incredibly exciting for us and we think unlocks the potential for game developers everywhere. At Microsoft, we're incredibly focused on making Windows a great operating system for gamers. And with Windows 10 partnering with Oculus to make it the very best operating system for Oculus Rift, we believe we will unlock the potential for millions of developers everywhere to create incredible virtual reality experiences. 
The RIF will natively work with Windows 10 to make it easy to set up, jump in, and have incredible VR experiences from day one. And we all know that virtual reality experiences require the highest performance, frame rate, latency, and with DirectX 12, working with Oculus to ensure that those experiences are exactly the kind of experiences that you will expect and that gamers will expect, we believe we'll be able to create state-of-the-art virtual reality experiences on the Oculus Rift on top of Windows. Another key area of focus for us that we talked about back in January was the ability to stream Xbox One games to Windows 10 devices. We think it was really important that we we're able to bring the greatness of Xbox, Xbox Live, and all of the games that people have created to PCs and tablets everywhere. I'm really proud to announce that that same streaming capability will be available for Oculus Rift. People will be able to stream their Xbox One games, great Xbox, Xbox One games like Halo, Forza, Sunset Overdrive, to the Oculus Rift using the controller that they know and love. It's something we've spent a lot of time perfecting and the ability to work with the team at Oculus to create a virtual cinema where Xbox One games will show up, I think really pays off the value of people's investment in their games and obviously their investment in Oculus. We have a short video where we can show you what this looks like. Let's take a look at that now. So people laughed. Windows is an open platform. Windows 10 will be shipping on July 29th. The partnership here is a great opportunity for us to foster all of the innovation that we've seen over the years in virtual reality with a company with years of history in a leadership position in helping the industry embrace this new technology, what it means for gamers today, and its uses in many different areas in the future. On behalf of Microsoft, I'm incredibly excited in what's in store as this partnership continues and the work that Oculus is doing to perfect their product uh, continues on. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Bill. So that was just a little peek inside of what we're doing with Microsoft. There's going to be a lot more to come. You can imagine putting on that headset, being in that virtual cinema, maybe in the future seeing your friends in there, seeing the other people you're playing, connecting with other people on Xbox One or PC. There's just so much potential of what we can do. And including the, uh, the Xbox One controller with the Oculus Rift is really exciting. It's, I'm just thrilled to have that device in there. It's a terrific controller, one of the best in the world. But Input is going to continue to evolve, rapidly evolve. And we've been working on a lot of other things, which we'll get to in a bit. But a VR platform, this VR headset, the input, as it all comes together, really isn't worth that much unless there's incredible content. It's that content that really defines the experience. It's the content that makes you feel like you're there, enjoying these incredible worlds. I'm pleased to welcome Jason Rubin, head of Oculus Studios, to talk about some of these incredible experiences that you're going to enjoy at launch with the Rift. Forty years ago, Star Wars came out and blew the world away. Most of my seven-year-old friends left the theater and they wanted to be Luke Skywalker. They wanted to be Jedi. But I was inspired by George Lucas. I wanted to create worlds. It took me six years to convince my parents to buy me my first computer. And I immediately set out making games. Those games were ugly, they were 2D, they were pixelated. But they were a start, and eventually those games led to Crash Bandicoot and Jack and Daxter. Almost every developer I know has a similar story. And over the years, those developers have made better and better games as the hardware got better. But there was always this unfulfilled promise, this distance between the players and the games and the worlds we were making for them. 
a window they couldn't step through, whether that was a monitor or whether it was a TV. And that frustrated a lot of us. VR changes that. VR fulfills the dream. It lets you step through that window. Finally, we can create words, worlds that feel real. We've worked with some of the best developers and publishers in the industry to build an incredible lineup of made-for-VR games and experiences. And I'm thrilled to have some of those developers with us here today. I'd like to introduce you to Hilmar, the CEO of CCP. It's great to be here and be a part of building the future of VR. Many people don't know this, but many of the founders and early employees of CCP actually started to work in VR 20 years ago. It was called VRML at the time, and it didn't really involve a headset, but it was VR to us. And since the launch of our first game, E Online, in 2003, we've kind of been blurring the lines between what's real and what's virtual. In fact, our company vision is to create virtual worlds more meaningful than real life. And that sounds kind of a ballsy, crazy uh, statement, and we often kind of have turmoil within the company about it. But now, when we are truly seeing the dawn of virtual reality, I don't think we have to uh, make excuses for that statement as much anymore. And you'll, ex you'll really get a chance to understand what I mean if you go and play E Valkyrie uh, on the latest gear. E-Valkyrie uh, is quite a Cinderella story for us. A small group of developers in Iceland were so inspired by the Oculus Rift Kickstarter back in 2012 uh, that they became backers themselves, and we, CCP, also became some of the early backers. And as soon as we got the kits, uh, they started trying. Uh, and the team that put this together, like many gamers, were raised on Star Wars, Party Style, Galactica, Firefly, and played games like Wing Commander and X-Wing as kids and, of course, EVE Online. So it's no surprise that the first thing they did when they got the DK1s was a tech demo for a space shooter. But what was really the surprise was how much the concept of VR added to the experience, even back then with the original DK1. I remember it myself when I tried it for the first time in the CCP kitchen where we had a little kind of show and tell. Um, you could kind of imagine what it would be but then when you could kind of figure out you had your head like a joystick and you can track down with missiles, and then you look down at your body, and the first reaction was, what, these are not the clothes I put on this morning. It was a super powerful moment. We knew we had something special, and when we show it to our biggest fan gathering, which happens in Iceland every year, back in 2013, the feedback was unanimous, please make this game. And so we did. And with the final Rift hardware, we can say with confidence that E Valkyrie is the closest thing you're going to get to being a real spaceship fighter pilot. What we've built is the essence of space dogfighting. You get in a ship, launch, and flight. No manuals, no pre-flight checklist, just pure combat. And because Valkyrie is built from the ground up for VR, it shows, showcases everything that's great about VR. When you put on your Rift and jump into Valkyrie, you're immersed in a 360-degree cockpit experience. The sights and sound create a sense of immersion we all wanted in space shooters. And when you combine the immersion and presence of VR with multiplayer combat, you get something that feels so real, it's more than real. That's why we love VR. We can't wait for you to get your hands on it when it launches next year or next week at E3. Uh, and see your reception. So huge thanks to the Oculus team and the community for all your support. I'm now going to leave you with our gameplay trailer.
My name is David Adams, and I work at Gunfire Games. At Gunfire, we love crafting new worlds. So we were really excited by the opportunity to build a new world utilizing the power of virtual reality and Oculus. And we actually worked with Oculus on Herobound 1 and 2. And that was really our first foray into virtual reality development. But we realized very early on that the technology would drastically change the way we both played and experienced games. But Herobound is the past. Today, I'm here to introduce you to a new experience we would like to take you on. It's called Kronos. Let's have a look. Kronos is an atmospheric RPG that plays out of the course of a young man's life, chronicling his quest to free the land from the curse of an evil dragon. And central to this quest is an ancient labyrinth, one that only opens once a year. But the labyrinth is a test. Each time the hero fails, he is cast out and must wait a year to return. So as the game plays out, our hero ages, and the gameplay changes significantly. As a young man, he's quick and nimble. As he grows older, he becomes a tougher and more seasoned warrior. And as an old man, he's frail, more reliant on his wits, magic, and knowledge of the vast labyrinth to overcome its obstacles and save his home. With Kronos, we really wanted to use the magic of presence to transform the player to a completely fantasy world. And so the environments in Kronos are just as memorable as the journey itself. You'll explore old ruins, vast caverns, and ancient tombs in search of the labyrinth's secrets, powers, and treasures. We want to invite you to join our hero and enter the realm of Kronos. Thank you. Thanks, David. I'm Ted Price from Insomniac Games. Edge of Nowhere is Insomniac's brand new third-person action adventure exclusively for the Rift. Travel to the frigid reaches of the Antarctic in search of a missing expedition. As you venture deep into the unknown, you'll encounter a surreal world which will test you, it will twist you, and eventually it may break you. You're surrounded on all sides by the unexpected, and nothing is as it seems. Let's take a quick look at Edge of Nowhere. So Edge of Nowhere has been designed for VR from day one. This isn't an idea that we had and said, hmm, maybe VR would work for this. We actually have had a blast diving headfirst into VR and designing for a completely different player experience. It's been educational, it's been challenging, but it's also brought that thrill of exploring new frontiers, something we all love at Insomniac. Now, as someone who's been skeptical of VR, I've become a believer. Yet I don't think that happens until you put on a headset and dive into one of these worlds yourself. Selfishly, I hope all of you come by the Oculus booth at E3 and experience Edge of Nowhere. Thank you very much, and I'm gonna turn it right back over to Jason. In addition to the games you just saw, we'll have more fantastic titles at E3. That list includes 
Damaged Core by High Voltage, a team that's done an incredible amount of work bringing the first person shooter into VR. VR Sports Challenge by Senzaru, the football, baseball, basketball, and hockey simulator we all want and expect on the Rift. Esper from CodeSync, a game that gives you a taste of what it'd be like to have telekinetic powers. Airmech by Carbon, amped up for Rift. Is it an RTS or is it real life? And of course, Lucky's Tale from Playful, a game that most of you have already fallen in love with. All of these games will not only be at E3, they're going to be available on Rift next year. And each demonstrates an incredible amount of VR R&D that's been done by the teams involved. But this is only the beginning. We're partnering with a huge number of developers and publishers on games and experiences tailored specifically for the Rift. This is a partial list, and it's constantly growing. We're going to have more updates for you as we get closer and closer towards launch. 2016 is going to be an absolutely incredible year for gaming. So I'm going to leave you with a through-the-window, old-school look at what's to come, but I implore you to come to E3 and step through the window for yourself. Thank you. Hello and good morning. For a lot of us, game developers are our heroes. They're brilliant, creative, and they've taken us on incredible journeys since we were kids. My parents and I played all the Sierra Adventure games together. And when I was in high school, I remember when my dad had to get a second phone line for the house because I was always connected to Ultima Online. Gaming got me into programming and into this incredible industry to begin with. I believe virtual reality is going to inspire a whole new generation of game developers. And at Oculus, we're committed to building the best platform for VR games. That means supporting established studios, small independent teams, and everyone in between. And thousands of developers all over the world have already joined us on this journey. With the Rift, anyone can be a creator. A few simple clicks, and you can build your own mountain in Unity and check out the view from the top in VR. Over the last three years, we've worked closely with both Unity and Epic Games to make Unity 5 and Unreal Engine 4 amazing tool sets for Oculus. Native support is free, and it works right out of the box. Targeting Oculus is easy and simple. But it's not enough to just have great hardware and software. Developers needed a way to share their work with Rift users around the world. Early on, we created Oculus Share, a portal where developers can share their games, experiments, and first forays into VR. This was a great start to a VR gaming ecosystem where teams can freely experiment. Over the next several months, we're going to be revamping Share. We're going to make it more vibrant and active with more ways for people to try these creations. Indie developers have created some of the most innovative and interesting games in the last decade. Who would have thought we would all enjoy spending hours running around as a boy made of meat, or inspecting passports as a border guard, or mining and spelunking with friends? We're looking forward to these same innovative developers discovering entirely new genres in VR and taking us all on incredible adventures. It's going to be awesome. So to that end, today I'm pleased to announce 
that we will be investing more than $10 million toward accelerating the development of these sorts of innovative, one-of-a-kind, independent games on the Rift. And we're excited to have you join this growing crowd of VR gamers and developers. And now to tell you more about the user experience in the Rift is Nate Mitchell, VP of Product at Oculus. Good morning, everyone. The Rift has always been about delivering the technology that unlocks true next generation gaming. We grow up daydreaming about really being there, stepping inside our favorite game. But for the first time with the Rift, we can actually live that experience. We've designed the Rift software and user experience from top to bottom for gamers. On the Rift dev team, one of the top priorities is making sure that it's an absolutely seamless uh, experience to jump straight into VR. We've been working hard with Microsoft, NVIDIA, AMD, and a number of top PC manufacturers to make this a reality. The goal is that the Rift just works right out of the box. As part of this effort, we're developing new system software for the Rift that we call Oculus Home. We've built Oculus Home for VR first and foremost. Home is your portal to everything Oculus, and it brings all your Rift games together in one place. This makes it the perfect jumping off point for everything in the Oculus universe. We've designed it to be lightweight and efficient, putting as little between you and your games as possible. When you put on the Rift, you're going to drop straight into Oculus Home. We have a virtual environment that you'll land in. Here, I can check out my games library. Maybe I want to play something right now. Or maybe I want to check out some of the top games that others are playing. Let's say I'm interested in learning more about Kronos. You can't convey what a VR game will be like through a video or a screenshot. But because we're already here in virtual reality, we can put you straight into a VR preview of the game before you even buy it. You can actually look around the scene from the Kronos Labyrinth. We've got this uh, huge golem standing there with you. And I can buy Kronos right here from VR, and I'm ready to play. Home also lets you see what your friends uh, are doing in the Rift and what they're playing right now. We can see here that Palmer's actually causing some havoc in Eve Valkyrie. And I can join him directly from VR and dive straight into the fray without ever taking the Rift off. This is super important. We've also built a 2D interface for Oculus Home. You can browse the store, stay in touch with your friends, and manage your games and downloads without putting the headset on. So that's a preview of Oculus Home. We're going to be talking more about Home and all the other features of the Oculus platform at Connect2 this September. From all of us on the Rift dev team, we're really excited to be gaming with you guys in VR next year. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. So there you have it. Today we've covered the absolute best VR headset, the Oculus Rift. The bundled Xbox One controller, the Xbox One streaming, the tight integration with Windows, and this incredible amount of content, experiences, and user interface, all designed specifically for virtual reality. Virtual reality is, real like, is really unlike anything else, and Rift is simply the best way to experience it. And you'll be able to get your Rift Q1 2016. So next week is E3, and this is going to be the biggest show for Oculus yet. Everything you saw today, you're going to be able to try on the show floor. Later today, you can jump on, grab the app, and register for your demo. Not quite yet. You don't need to all pull out your cell phones. This is later today. And we can't wait to see you there. We can't wait to show you what we've been working on. But before we go, there's just one more thing that we really want to show you. Something that we've been working on for quite a while. You've heard us say input is hard. Well, it is, but we got it right. I'd like to welcome Paul Merlucky, close friend and colleague, to the stage. Good morning, everybody. Sorry for getting you all up so early at 10. Uh, 
We started Oculus years ago to enable new experiences that would transform gaming and entertainment through the power of virtual reality. We've talked a lot today about how we're doing that with the Rift, but we're not done yet. We've been working on virtual reality input since the very earliest days of Oculus, always looking at ways to open new experiences that are only possible with cutting edge future technology. Now we see virtual reality input evolving over the coming years, and there will be different inputs for different types of games, especially as developers optimize content for different kinds of games. Remember, developers have been working with game pads for years in VR. They've proven that you can make really compelling content with a game pad. And you know, a lot of these partners we've been working with, we've been working for one or even two years on these projects, and it's really fantastic to be here showing them off. Uh, but we see virtual reality com input coming in lots of different forms, depending on what kind of experience you're looking for. Brendan talked about how excited we are to include the Xbox One controller as part of the Rift, uh, to make sure that developers have something that they can target, that they know every single person who has the Rift will have, something that they can design their game to work very effectively with. And the Xbox controller is a key part of the current virtual reality puzzle. For example, it's currently the absolute best way to play games like Lucky's Tale, Edge of Nowhere, or Eve Valkyrie. It just is. But what about future games and future experiences that can only be unlocked with a different input device? I've seen thousands of people inside the Rift now. I've given thousands of demos. And one of the first things that a lot of people do is they reach out into this virtual world. It's something entirely new to them, and it's a natural reaction to something that they've never experienced before. We wanted to create an input device that actually lets people reach out, that lets those people interact with objects in the virtual world. Let me show you what we've been working on. This is Oculus Touch. These are going to take virtual reality gaming to the next level. Come on, let's clap. Let's do it. Woo! Ah, super hot. Oculus Touch is a pair of track controllers that we've created to take VR to the next level. Th these are feature prototypes for Oculus Touch, a set of prototypes that, we're code that we've codenamed Half Moon. We wanted to enable the best and absolute widest range of virtual reality experiences. And to do that, we had a number of goals for the Half Moon project. First, we wanted to deliver hand presence, the sense of feeling as though your virtual hands are actually your real hands. This is critical to nailing the sense of overall presence. Once you have your hands involved, you really need tracking to be absolutely perfect, accurate, and low latency, or you're going to feel like your hands are dead. Precise manipulation of virtual entities in the virtual space is also absolutely critical. For example, you need to be able to pick up a gun from a table and then fire it, throw it, or drop it effortlessly without even having to think about it. This required a lot of design on how to make the controller interactions as natural as possible. Overall, we wanted a design that was low mental load, that you, something you wouldn't have to think about, something that would let you use these controllers effortlessly like you use your real hands in the real world. We also wanted to enable communicative gestures for social interactions. Imagine pointing, waving, or giving a thumbs up. These are the types of experiences that Half Moon enables. And another priority was including proven traditional inputs, uh, like buttons and analog sticks. Uh, we want to enable a lot of different kinds of virtual reality experiences, entirely new VR-only experiences, genres of games that have been around for decades that are being brought into, v into VR, and also hybrid experiences that incorporate the best of traditional input with the best of virtual reality input. Buttons and analog sticks are still around for a reason. They've been proven to be a great way to interact with complex games. There's something everyone knows how to use. There's something that developers have proven is critical for a lot of different types of genre, like simulation or platforming. Those types of inputs are not going anywhere. Finally, Oculus Touch needed to be lightweight and ergonomic. It had to be easy to get in and out of, and it had to be comfortable for extremely long periods of play, whether you're standing and reaching out into the virtual world, or whether you're sitting on your couch with your controllers resting in your lap. See that? Resting on my lap. Uh, so we, we built the Half Moon prototypes with several key features. Uh, there's two controllers, one for each hand. You have two hands. Uh, they're mirror images of each other. 
like the two hands that you have. They're wireless, so that you can move and interact in the virtual world freely, unencumbered by cables. They have integrated high-precision, low-latency, six-degree-of-freedom six tracking, leveraging the same constellation tra tracking technology that we use in the Rift, along with integrated inertial measurement units. Now, each of these half-moon controllers has a traditional analog thumbstick, two buttons, and an analog trigger. But they also have something else that we call the hand trigger. You can see the trigger right there under my middle finger. Imagine using this to pick up a virtual gun and then using your index finger to fire it. Touch also includes haptics that developers can use to deliver feedback when you're interacting with objects in the virtual world so that you can actually feel the things that you're touching. Finally, though, Touch can detect a set of finger poses using a matrix of center, sensors mounted throughout the inside of the device. Together, they work to recognize natural hand poses like pointing, waving, or giving a thumbs up. We've built a new demo for Oculus Touch showing this off that we call Toybox, and we'll be showing it off for the first time to the public at E3. Uh, Toybox is actually our internal prototyping testbed that we've used to design uh, the Half Moon prototypes and to experiment with new features and interactions. It's really a great sandbox for playing with things. You can light explosives, uh, dual wield laser guns, pull robots limb from limb, uh, punch garden gnomes, play tetherball. Just a lot of really fun interactions that we've been experimenting with on our way to natural virtual reality input. And one of the coolest things about Toybox is that it's a social experience. It's a multiplayer experience. You're actually in a space with another person using the controllers far away. But you feel like you're in the same place. And what's amazing about that is that as the experience gets more natural, you start to actually feel like you're in the same place with this person. You start to wave to them or to gesture to things so that they can pick them up. And you do it without even thinking about it because you kind of feel like the person is really there in the room with you, even though they're actually down the hall in one of the other test pods. Uh, we really think that Oculus Touch is going to surprise you, and I'm really excited to show off to Toy Box to a lot of people. I'll be actually running a lot of the demos at E3, so we might get a chance to play together. Um, so that's Oculus Touch. We think that they're going to deliver an entirely new set of virtual reality experiences, and we can't wait to see what developers have in store. The last few years have been incredible for virtual reality. Things have come so far, so fast. If you were to show someone a video of this event today, or heck, even all the technology that's in the virtual reality industry across all these different companies, not just Oculus, if you took a video of that and showed it to someone three or four years ago, they would have thought that it looked like a science fiction film. It would have been a perfect cue. But this isn't science fiction. This is reality, and it's happening today. Thank you. I'll see all of you at E3.